What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Just Cause TV channel. This week, it's finale week here for our NFL regular season pickums. Week 17 pickums and survivor picks coming at you in this video. As always, I am joined by my good buddy and now 3X fantasy football champion this year. Jeff, what's going on, man? How much? It's been a nice uh, past week 16. So we look at those standings. I feel like I'm going to be disappointed. But other than that, I can't complain. <laughs> I, I, I gave you your lead in a, a three, three X fantasy football winner this year. You didn't take it and run? What, what, what's going you know, on? I, don't, I don't like to brag. No one cares. <laughs> okay. You know, he, and I know, he's the and greatest football mind I, that's I, right. uh, of our generation. Yeah. He proved it. That's, that's right. Yeah. Led you in with that and you shot it down. Fair enough. All right. As always, I am joined by my special guest, Dr. West. What's going on, man? How's it going, my sugar daddy, Anthony? Ah, you're going to close me out with sugar daddy, huh? That's right. You know, I, I did just win our home league, so I got this cash to throw around now, so I'll That's spend right. some money on you. That's right, I'll baby. I'll hook you up. I know what you like. <laughs> if, if you guys are ready, let's hop into the results from last week. I, I know uh, I certainly am ready. Uh, that's back-to-back -back week, fellas, with a, with a win here. Uh, the straight-up win with 11. Great. Gaining some ground here on Dr. West. To now I'm tied with Jeff with one week left. But, Jeff, man, West has a three-game head start on us this week. Yeah. Um, you know, like you said in the text earlier, we're going to have to throw some Hail Murrays. <laughs> yeah. We're going to catch it. Yeah. And I even took the Jags last week like a big dum-dum. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I will say, though, week 17, this is where things get real hairy because there's teams that have already clinched and – you know, how much effort are they going to put in? How much, how long are their starters going to play? There can be some real fluky games. So yeah. anything could happen this week. Yeah. You got teams that are games with two teams that aren't playing for anything. So <laughs> yeah. we're going to have young talent out there this week. This could be a weird week for DraftKings. A lot of 4k players are going to be played probably in DraftKings this week, which is going to be kind of weird. Uh, Dr. Wes for finale week. Do we have a giveaway this week? We have a giveaway. All right, this is the last one. I didn't even get a challenger last week, so if I don't get a challenger this week, we're done. But I keep adding to the list, and I think you're going to like the one I added this time. So let's recap. Number one, we got the shiny mosaic Lamar Jackson uh, got game. We got this trash player named Troy Polamalu Ooh. mosaic Ooh, Hall of Fame card. Can't believe he's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we have uh, Jeff Spirit Animal, Josh Allen. Yeah. This thing's just... Uh -huh rising in value uh and we have mr tua this oh, is his uh, tua! nfl review he's back this is a pristine <laughs> card of mine it's beautiful and then the last one is all right this is my last one to entice people mm -hmm. this is uh from last year miles sanders rookie card with it's a green parallel you can see there's some oh, green the writing green. and mm -hmm. there's a chunk of his jersey uh game worn jersey in there so wow. uh Gosh. you know this what what more can i do people just come get this rookie uh, patch card it's up to five dr west five five cards, five cards the, this week a tua. and a tua a tua rookie and a miles sanders rookie a patch card in there as well guys all you gotta do is beat dr west as you can see i've done it the past two weeks it's not that hard Humble brag there. Yeah. All, I mean, if I can do it, you can do it at this point. It's that easy. Trust me. If, if I can do it, you guys can do it. All you got to do, leave your picks down below in the comments and hit that subscribe button and you're entered to win. It's that simple, guys. We just hit 100 subscribers last week. So help us out here. Leave your, your picks down in the comments and let's see what happens here this week. It's week 17. Who knows? You may be able to beat Dr. Wes. If you guys are ready, though, let's hop into week 17. You ready to go? Let's do it. All right. Before we get into it, just as a reminder, guys, all of our odds and lines are brought to you by DK Sportsbook. They are obviously subject to change as the week goes on. It is Tuesday night. These games are played on Sunday. They will change as the week goes on. And all of our picks are going to be straight up. We do not make spread picks. There are plenty of other spread shows out there. We will offer advice on the spreads and over-unders. But our picks are straight up. And our first game of the week, where else do we lead off? With other than with our Cincinnati Bengals that we got here, they are hosting the 10 and 5 Baltimore Ravens. Cincinnati, an 11 and a half point home underdog here to the Ravens. Over under state of 44 and a half. But yeah, guys, we're also we kick things off. The 
other than the Bengals, who have now won two games in a row. They play host to the current sixth seed in the AFC playoffs, the Baltimore Ravens, who are actually in a four-way tie for the last three spots in the AFC with Miami, Cleveland, and Indianapolis. Baltimore, they are averaging 37 points a game in their last four games. All four have been wins just to get to this four-way tie for the AFC wildcard, while the Bengals surprisingly have now won two games in a row, laughably almost, after beating the Texans to leapfrog them in the AFC. And they actually currently sit fifth slash sixth overall for the draft next year, still tied with the Philadelphia Eagles. So Jeff, we'll leave it off here with you every single week. Can the Bengals make it three wins in a row? No, they cannot. Um, Yeah, I mean, the Bengals have played a lot better, but... That team that they played last week, Houston, just looked like they were mailing it in. Uh, I think Brandon Allen's uh, yardage total was 372 yards for the game. That Houston secondary is trash. The Bengals were able to get the ground game going, and that's what kept them in it. They still gave up a lot of points to Houston, and whatever's happened to Lamar Jackson over the past few weeks, I think that continues. He just looked like a completely different quarterback from earlier on in the season. Um, That defense is still stout. They're going to get enough pressure on whomever is quarterbacking for the Bengals to make this game an easy win for the Baltimore Ravens. Taking the Ravens? Yeah, Wes, you took the Jaguars last week. You going to take the Bengals this week? I got to play it semi-safe. Uh, you know, I can't be too stupid, and this isn't one of the games I'm going to be stupid about. But I'm just going to throw it out there that the Bengals are pissing me off. I mean, <laughs> like, just winning. the. Why are they winning these games? Yeah. What, you're keeping Zach Taylor around. You're making your draft stock worse. Like, winning meaningless games is like the ultimate Bengals move. Uh, just push us back farther in the draft. Uh, get us some people that we don't want. Um, I'm not happy with them right now. But I'm going to take the Ravens, and I hope to God that they beat the, they, the Ravens beat the Bengals. Yeah, uh, you guys said I don't have much analysis here to add for this game. Uh, Trying to make up games here on Dr. West is my goal for this week, but unfortunately I have not been doing very well solo picking the Bengals. I'm 0-5 in that aspect, which would literally give me the lead right now. I'm not mad about it. You guys are. It's not. Yeah, you know. (laughs) Uh, The Bengals' two-game win streak comes to an end here. The Ravens have everything to play for. The Ravens should win by two-plus touchdowns, I would think. Something to the tune of, like, 34-14-ish, 34-13-ish, somewhere in there. I love the Ravens minus 11.5 to just stop all over this Bengals team. We have a Baltimore sweep played off with our Sunday. There's no Thursday games this week, guys. We're on a Sunday-only schedule this week. Game one Mm -hmm. on Sunday will be a sweep of the Ravens, and that will take us to another team that's on some weird two-game win streak here that I can't (laughs) quite explain. The 2-13 and 13 New York Jets traveling to the 6-9 and nine New England Patriots. New England, only field goal home favorite here with an over-under at 41. Woof. Oh, my goodness. But speaking of two bad teams in a row with two wins in a row, we have to talk about the New York Jets now, who have now officially removed themselves from the Trevor Lawrence discussion. And despite weird start of the year, losing 13 games in a row, do not have the longest losing streak in the NFL this season. Very shocking. But they now get the Pats, who what appears to be a Freaky Friday situation, have lost three in a row and uh, have failed to eclipse the 12-point mark in their last three. Cam Newton, not guaranteed to start this game. Dr. West, I asked Jeff the same question about the Bengals. Can the Jets make it three in a row? Well, I definitely like their chances better than the Bengals' chances. Um, Like you said, both of these teams are just absolutely putrid. Uh, God bless the people that actually want to watch this game because those are the (laughs) true NFL fans. You know, they they don't care how low scoring it is, how irrelevant the teams are. They're going to watch them. God bless them. Uh, I'm going to take the Patriots, but I'm not feeling good about it. I don't I have no interest in seeing this game, no interest in betting it. Um, It's going to be ugly, ugly. Yeah, you said it. As as a Patriots fan, I am not going to watch this game. I'd rather watch like Olympic rowing. Or something like that, <laughs> off the top of my head. Jeff, who are you taking? Uh, you know, I gotta make up some ground. So give me the hot team. I am taking the Adam Gase All Stars no, and no going way. with the Jets. Wow. Um, I don't know if it's gonna be Stidham or Newton. Either way, I don't think uh, they both played last week combined. I don't think they crossed 100 yards passing, which seems to be par for the course for this team. I think they are just demoralized at this point. Belichick is 
probably wishing they would have tanked and had a chance at getting Trevor Lawrence. But right now the Jets got something going, and I just think even though New England's at home, I need to make up some ground. I like the momentum that they have going. Um, you know, we got a quarterback here in Sam Darnold that's potentially planned to keep his job. I mean, Trevor Lawrence was going to be the man, but now they're not in the running. So I think he's going to come out with a fire in his belly and lead this team to a victory. Jeff, we're going to be in simpatico this week, man. Um, as a Patriots fan, I didn't wear the Patriots shirt mm. again this week. Wow. Uh, we got to do something here, you know. We're both down by three games to Dr. West, so this isn't a pick that I want the Jets to win, as obviously. But this New England team, they're missing a ton of pieces now. So many pieces are just injured and out. With Stephon Gilmore now out, so can they cover Brashad Perriman, the speedster, while still trying to cover Crowder? We'll see. Uh, in terms of quarterbacks, I wouldn't be surprised if Stidham started this game. And if that happens, Darnold is the better quarterback. Stidham is bad. I know this. I can say it as a Patriots fan, Stidham is bad. He's not the answer. The Jets, for some reason, have shown that they want to win. And what better way to win than to go out with three in a row and take one game against the Pats? Uh, I, my notes, I think you guys will both take the Pats, but I know Jeff needs to make up some games. I figured you were going to take the Jets. I'm taking the Jets as well. And we'll see if we can make up a game here on Dr. Wes. I almost took the Jets, too. I thought it was too crazy of a move. So you guys are lucky I went first. I'm going to honor it. But yeah. uh, I didn't want to get crazy, and here I am being the outsider. Yeah, we got – Well, you know, you got that big lead. You, you got the prevent defense going on, so yeah. I can certainly understand. Yeah, that's not how I through. got here. I took some crazy pick. I got I to gotta get aggressive again. Yeah. yeah. I think I, – I was looking at the stats earlier. I don't have them in front of me, unfortunately, but I think you're 20 and 22, Dr. West, in solo picks this year. That's the main reason why you're out there, because I'm like 12 and 19. I think Jeff is 6 and 11 in solo picks, something along those lines. So the fact that you've picked so many solo games correctly and you're almost batting 500 is the reason why you're where you're at right now. So got to figure it out. Yeah. So, all right, here we go. Patriots Island. And it's not me this time. It's Dr. Wes. Jeff, let's go. Let's pick up a game let's here. Let's do man. it. I never, the, one time, yes, 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 yes. the one time you'll see me root against New England is this pickums for beating Dr. West. That's it. I'm cut off. The Pats Island for Dr. West. I went to click something, but I forgot to click. All right, game three this week. We've got another AFC East matchup. The 10-5 and five Miami Dolphins traveling to the 12-3 and three Buffalo Bills and one of the better games that we have this week. Buffalo four and a half point home favorites. Over under currently at 47 and a half. Just like Baltimore, Miami is in the mix for one of those three AFC wildcard spots this week, and they are currently in as part of the four-way tie. So when they're in, They've won two in a row in four of their last five with a six-point loss to the Chiefs sandwiched right there in the middle. In their 26-25 win against the Raiders, Tua was benched yet again for poor play. The man completed like 17 passes for 70 yards, further confirming that he is just not getting it done. Meanwhile, Buffalo picked up their fifth win in a row. Would have been 10th win in a row again had it not been for the Hale Murray. They won last week 38-9 in Foxborough to lock up the AFC East. Jeff, with your spirit animal, Josh Allen, re-entering the MVP discussion, can Buffalo get it done at home? Absolutely. They're a team that is really hitting on all cylinders right now. Josh Allen is thrown for uh, four-plus touchdowns in uh, back-to-back games, and he was benched. I mean, not benched, but uh, they rested him for the majority of the fourth quarter last week because the game was well in hand. This team just looks primed and ready like vintage 1990s Buffalo Bills. I don't know why um, they continue to run two out there. I get it. You know, he's the young the young gun. You want to see what you have in him. But you've got a legit shot at making a playoff run. And Fitzpatrick has recaptured that Fitz magic and really has that team playing well. Um, so I think Flores has just got to bite the bullet and say, Tua, it's not your year. We're going to go with the veteran. Um, but needless to say, I think that, you know, despite Miami's good defense, I think they're going to give them more of a Buffalo more of a challenge than the past couple of weeks and the reemergence of a, a running game there in, in Miami um, with Miles Gaskin looking good coming back from the COVID list. It's just not going to be enough. All the momentum's going Buffalo's way. Plus they're at home in that Western New York winter weather. Miami's obviously a Southern team accustomed to warm weather. That's going to give Buffalo the edge here. Yeah, Dr. West, yeah. real quick. Oh, I forgot Jeff has that little background. Um, I went and looked at the stats. Just just pulled them up so you guys had them. So Tua didn't, you know, he didn't play horrible. He went 17 for 22, 
but only 94 passing yards. So that's like five, less than five yards per completion, which is bad. Fitz came in, went nine for 13, and had 182 yards. And that was just the fourth quarter, right? Like, there's there's something when you watch Tua, he looks like he's so timid when it comes to throwing the ball. This offense needs to be unleashed. So when you're in the playoffs, not only do you have to have a good defense like Miami has, you still have to be able to put up points when you're going up against a team like Buffalo. Tua's not going to get you over that 30-point hump very often in these shootouts against teams like Kansas City and teams like Buffalo. So I'll go through my pick up here. It shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. I'm going Buffalo here as well. Um, Josh Allen playing just like so well. Miami has gone nine and two in their last eleven games, though, guys. Which I mean, it, which is kind of insane when you think about it. Um, this is a huge game for them, and is honestly, if they lose this game, they could be out of the playoffs because you got to think Baltimore has a cake matchup with Cincy. We'll, we'll call it a cake matchup. Indy has a cake matchup with Jacksonville. Cleveland is getting Pittsburgh. That's a big one, and then this is the big one. Those are the two games that are probably going to decide the last seed in the AFC. You got to get some points against Buffalo to have any sort of chance here. Buffalo still, I believe, they have something to play for here with a better seed at the AFC. So, taking Buffalo, who you got, Doctor West? Yeah, I think you guys said it perfectly. I won't elaborate on it too much. I think this is one of those tricky games where you have one team that desperately wants to win and the another team that's securely within the playoffs. And, you know, how hard are they going to try? How long are they going to keep their starters out there? I don't know. Um, I'll take the Bills, but I don't feel great about it. If so you have any plenty of time to change to Miami, then. Yes, you're, you're changing to Miami. <laughs> no, just keep me in the game. There you go. Please, there's your boy. Please keep me in. <laughs> yeah, here, here's the thing though. Like <laughs> Buffalo and Miami being in the same division, Buffalo would like nothing more than to eliminate the Dolphins from the playoffs by defeating them. Oh, for sure. So yeah. they could roll Josh out out there for three quarters and be like, "Hey, man, go out there and eliminate this division rival. We want to be the AFC East representative for the AFC playoffs." So. Well, what's the seeding situation like? Is Buffalo, have they secured the number two seed? No, so it's Buffalo and Pittsburgh can either get the two or the three seed. Pittsburgh doesn't yeah. seem like they care. They've already announced their resting stars. We'll get to the game here in a little bit. Buffalo has not announced that they're resting anybody yet, so. And yeah. I've seen at least. So. I, I, I just I just don't think, you know, Pittsburgh's been there, done that kind of team, and, and Buffalo, to me, is they've got all the momentum going. So I, I don't think that, yeah, eventually maybe in the second half they rest them, but I, I think they come out and try and play play to win this game. Yeah, it gets a good defense like Miami's. It's a good playoff matchup starter for the playoffs here. Right. So uh, who knows? This might be a repeat matchup here at the playoffs as well. You never know. So we're taking a Buffalo sweep. Jeff, did you want to switch? No, I mean, I can't. I can't go against okay. Josh Allen. Can't he got him to multiple titles, man. He's my dude. He's your dude. All right, let's go. Buffalo sweep here. That will take us to the game that we just were talking about. The 12-3 and Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to the 10-5 and Cleveland Browns. This is another big matchup for the AFC, guys. Uh, Cleveland, a seven-point home favorite here against Pittsburgh because, like I just mentioned, Pittsburgh has announced they are resting starters. Mason Rudolph will start for the Steelers this week. Uh, if Buffalo beats Miami, then Pittsburgh is locked into the three seed, so it doesn't really matter the result of their game anyway. Buffalo kind of controls their own fate with a win. Uh, th- so there's really no point in playing the Stars for Pittsburgh because either way you're, you're basing off what happens in Buffalo. Uh, on the other hand, though, this is a must-win game for Cleveland as they are tied in that AFC wildcard picture with those four teams that I mentioned before coming off their loss to, yep, the Jets. They lost to the Jets last week. Dr. West, can Cleveland rebound with a win to get into the playoffs or will Pittsburgh play spoiler for them? So I have a question for you. What's the better team? the second string Steelers or the New York Jets starting lineup? Mm. Probably pretty close. (laughs) That's a good question. Uh, Mason Rudolph's head is still dented in from Miles uh, Garrett. (laughs) It is. Uh, I am going to take the Browns, but I'm going to tell you that this is the ultimate Browns move would be to lose their playoff spot to the second string of the Steelers and just break everybody's heart in Cleveland. Like, I can't you see that headline? I can see it. Yeah. Yeah, but, that, uh, especially between these two teams that hate each other. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 This it smells like trouble and I wouldn't be anywhere near this game. I, I saw the lines at minus 10 now. Uh so 
it seems like the money's coming in on the Browns, but I don't know. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Weird game. Just like Buffalo, wouldn't Pittsburgh feel fantastic for knocking out a division rival out of the playoffs? Oh, for sure. Same exact situation. Jeff, who you got, man? Well, I mean, Wes kind of stole my thunder there. I'm going to pick the Steelers because I can't think of more Cleveland Browns ending for a season than to lose to basically the backups for the Steelers. So, um, I mean, like Wes said also, he was so on point. They played the Jets last week. The second team of the Steelers is probably roughly equivalent to what we're seeing on the Jets. So, and I'm sure, you know, maybe some of the Steelers like Deontay Johnson will still get some run. Um, You know, maybe Benny Snell or someone like, uh, McFarlane, the rookie running back, who's still who's got some talent, he's going to be given a chance to shine here. You know, it doesn't feel good picking the Steelers, and Cleveland does have so much more to play for. But in the interest of making up some games and considering Cleveland's tradition of just blowing things, I'm going to go with the Steelers here. So, so with Pittsburgh already confirming their resting starters. Cleveland should be getting back their wide receiver core this week where, you know, they had like five wide receivers missed to the COVID, you know, tracing or whatever. None of them, I don't think, tested positive, but they were all around someone who did test positive. I think that they squeak by this Steelers second unit here. I think the Steelers are still going to play this tough. They're going to force Cleveland to play deep into the fourth quarter here. Uh, I think it's going to be closer than people expect. I know Dr. Ross mentioned it's about 10 points now, it looks like. Um... So I, I think maybe it's like a field goal or six-point game or something like that for Cleveland because Pittsburgh is still motivated to potentially knock them out of the playoffs. They can't control the Ravens' mm-hmm. fate. The Ravens are probably going to get in with the Beng- get, win against the Bengals. But they can control the Browns' fate, essentially. So why not knock them out? But I think Cleveland takes the win here, especially being at home is good for them. You know, a little bit more relaxation before the game starts and whatnot. But Cleveland, Jeff, trying to make up a game on Dr. West here with Pittsburgh. That's right. All right. Let's go, Jeff, on the Pittsburgh Island. We've got, unfortunately, now our first game where two teams are not going to make the playoffs. The 6-9 and nine Minnesota Vikings traveling to the 5-10 and 10 Detroit Lions. Minnesota, a seven-point road favorite. Again, I don't know what the deal is with Lions games this year, but none of them have Lions on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, which is ridiculous. Like Matt Stafford is the ultimate line mover or something like that. I don't understand. <laughs> but, alas, here we are. Uh, I don't feel like we have much to discuss about this game as both these teams have been eliminated from the playoffs. Both teams have lost three in a row. They should be looking forward to next season. No reason to rush anybody out there for this game. Jeff, to keep things rolling, man, just who do you got in this game with no meaning? Well, I mean, I get why we're kind of laughing about Stafford being a line mover, but if you saw Chase Daniel play last week, you understand. I mean, that offense just looked um, anemic in every sense of the word. The only touchdown they have was a special team's return for a touchdown. Kenny Galladay's not going to play. You know, they're just not – and like you said, what's the reason to bring Stafford out so you can finish the season 6-10? and I get it. You're playing a division rival. But there, I, I don't see any reason they want to bring him out there and risk further injury. They may be trying to move, get, move him in the offseason, and if he gets hurt, that's going to make it incredibly difficult. Not that the Vikings are very good, but um, I just think that Matthew Stafford right now is questionable. And unless he's going to play, there's unless I knew definitively he was going to play, there's no way I can pick them. So they still have Dalvin Cook. They still have Adam Thielen. They still have Justin Jefferson. The Vikings do. So give me that trio and a banged-up defense going up against even more banged-up offense. Go Vikings. <laughs> Taking the Vikings. Dr. West, who you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think he said it well. This is this is a game. I've said it a million times on the show. It's definitely a trap. Um, it's like neither team cares. Uh, does it matter for anything? Maybe Mike Zimmer keeping his job? I don't know. Um, I see here that the, uh, the Lions are 1-6 at home. So that's mm. pushing me towards the eh, Vikings, but I don't feel good about it in any way. Taking the Vikings. And again, this is one of those spots where we're trying to make up games, but I'm not taking Detroit here. <laughs> Minnesota is the much better overall team. And I do think they are still going to deploy some combination of probably Cook, Cousins, Thielen, Jefferson, something like that out there at some point in this game. And especially with no reason to trot out Matt Stafford, who I'm not sure how he's hanging on this season. He's had like 
leg injuries. I thought he had like a long injury, a chest injury, an arm injury, an elbow injury, a thumb injury, a hand injury. He's had them all. Yeah. Like he had the longest list of injuries this year. Why throw him out there for this game? Detroit will probably be lifeless. Minnesota can run through this defense no matter who is out there, whether it's Madison, Abdullah, Mike Boone, it doesn't matter who the hell it is. Uh, Minnesota should be able to run through this bad Lions team, whoever it is. So, Minnesota, Shout out to my Bearcat, Mike Boone. Mike Boone, <laughs> the Bearcat. Let's go. Minnesota taking the sweep here. And we now get to a game that actually has some big playoff implications here, guys, believe it or not. Wow. The 6-9 Dallas Cowboys are traveling to the 5-10 New York Giants, traveling to those Meadowlands. Dallas, a field goal road favorite with an over-under at 45 in an NFC East game that actually has some meaning. There honestly has not been a hotter team over the past two weeks than the Cowboys, who have scored 37 points or more in their past two and have now won three straight. They need some help, though, as they need to win and Washington to lose to make the playoffs, whereas the Giants also are technically not eliminated either, as they also need to win and have Washington lose to make the playoffs. After a four-game win streak, though, the Giants have crashed back down to earth with three straight losses, and they have not scored more than 13 points in any of those three losses. So, Jeff, how are you taking? Uh, I'm going Cowboys here. I don't like the Cowboys. You know, as a as a young man growing up, they were the beasts out of the NFC East. You know, they won all the Super Bowl titles with Aikman and um, Michael Irvin and Emmitt Smith. This team is a shadow of that. Let's not get it twisted. Um, they start Andy Dalton. Zeke played last week and looked okay. They've got Tony Pollard. Um, so that they are doing some things offensively. Andy Dalton actually has looked pretty good. You know, he kind of reminds me, if you put good weapons around him, he's not necessarily going to elevate your team, but if you surround him with some talent, he'll play within that talent and do well enough to get you to the victory assuming you're not putting that victory right on his uh, right arm. So <laughs> I think, you know, the Giants, like you said, they're in a tailspin right now. Um, you know, they're going to find out if Daniel Jones is the guy. I think he's probably got another year. But um, I just think the Dallas right now has the momentum. And I think outside of Washington, who's in their own sort of turmoil that we'll get to later, they've got the best shot at um, actually winning this atrocious division. Nobody from this division should be making the playoffs, but it is what it is, so give me Dallas in this game. Dr. West, do you agree? No, I can't take the Cowboys. I, I still don't think they're good. And how many times in my life have I, have I seen Andy Dalton in a must-win game? <laughs> like, I, I, just, I just have fallen for this too many times. Yeah. I'm going to take Danny Dimes. I think he's uh, going to be scrambling all over this bad defense. Uh, I don't feel good about it again. I don't feel strongly, but uh, Andy Dalton versus any other quarterback <laughs> in a must-win game, I'm going to go with the other quarterback. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm probably going to regret <laughs> this pick, but, you know, nonetheless. Well, Jeff? Nope. Sticking with him. Uh, no, I mean, I, 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 Wes has fallen from my trap here. I was trying all to right, lure right. him into the Giants. Because yeah. I wanted to take the Cowboys as well here. Um, the Giants are averaging 12 points a game over their last mm. five games. Whereas the Cowboys are... Wait, hang on. Let me check. That. They're rolling with Andy Dalton, at quarterback. Which is something I literally never thought I would say. And they are averaging 36 points across their last three games. All of them being wins. Give me the Cowboys to make this push for the playoffs here. With Andy freaking Dalton. You know, that's why they brought him in, though. They figured, hey, worst case scenario, if Dak goes down, let's have a relatively high priced backup that's shown, proven that he can win some games. And I think it took a little while, but it's they're starting to round into form. So I think that move of signing Andy Dalton as opposed to having whoever, Danucci or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> as your, yeah, as your backup, it's worked out for them. I mean, Granted, they've been lucky the division is so poor, but at the end of the day, like that has been the difference um, as far as them actually being relevant here in Week 17. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> and, you know, Washington, not a cake matchup either. It's the last game of our week. We'll get to that here in a second. But Dr. Wes taking the Giants on the island, leaving Jeff and I to take the Cowboys here. That's our second, you know, Anthony, Jeff, catch feeling, up. Possible I'm, yeah, I'm feeling a little uneasy. Okay, let's go. Let's hop into our next game here. We'll keep on rolling with the 4-11 Atlanta Falcons traveling to the 10-5 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
Tampa touchdown home favorite here with an over under at 50 and a half. But guys, what is there to say, left to say about Atlanta this year? Uh, we all did call the plus 11 against the Chiefs last week. So, you know, congratulations to us. We all called that one. They held the Chiefs to 17 points and with a chance for a field goal to take the game to overtime. The super consistent Young Wei Ku absolutely shanked the piss out of the field goal <laughs> to cause even more heartbreak for Falcons fans. If you haven't seen it, it's almost laughable at this point. We now get a rematch from just two weeks ago where the Bucks won 31-27, setting the stage for yet another Tom Brady comeback against the Falcons here in Week 17. Mm. If the Bucks win this game, though, they lock in the five seed and get the winner of the NFC East. So, Jeff, can Atlanta find a new way to blow a lead to Tom Brady yet again? I'm sure they're going to try. So, <laughs> I don't know what heartbreaking fashion they can do that. And I feel like they have just blown games all year long in the most incredible way. That young way kick pales in comparison to things we've seen earlier in the year. But um, Raheem Morris does have them playing better. They've been in these games. They do look com- like a competent team out there. And... You know, I don't know if they're – I'd imagine – I haven't looked at the injury report, but I'd imagine Julio Jones is probably not going to play. Todd Gurley, my God, the man needs to find a chair in the ass somewhere. Um, But, yep, they still have some people out. Calvin Ridley is going to be a beast in this league for years to come. Uh, But Tampa – not specifically Tampa, but Tom Brady just has their number. And that offense, my God, is it clicking down there in Tampa. Uh, Mike Evans has just been um, meshing so well with Brady. It took a few weeks for him to get acclimated. Um, He was always catching touchdowns, but now the yardage is coming too. And Antonio Brown had a touchdown. Gronk, um, Fournette. I don't know if Ronald Jones will be back in time for this one. But, yeah, they just have their number, and they're playing at home, and they're going to be motivated to get that five seed so they can get what essentially would amount to a bye while actually playing game in the playoffs. So I'm going Bucks. Yeah, Brady yeah, got Brady. everyone involved yeah. last week. Godwin, Evans, Gronk, and Antonio Brown had touchdowns last week, which is scary when he has all those options clicking together. Dr. Wes, where are you going? Yeah, I'm going to take the Bucks. I They're going for the most desirable seed outside of the one seed in the NFC, which is the five seed. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that the Washington Washingtons could cause fits in the playoffs. They're built. Sure. They're built as a team that could, you know, cause some problems, but they're definitely the team if you're going to choose one, uh, especially if it somehow becomes the Cowboys. Those That would be the team you want to play uh, in the first round. And so I think that they actually have something to play for. The Falcons don't really, but they have been playing with some heart uh, even when they're out of it, uh, which I can appreciate. Um, but yeah, give me the Buccaneers, which are the clearly more talented team. Yep. Agreed. Not much else to add here. Tampa knows that they want that fifth seed. Um, it doesn't. I think for them, it doesn't matter if it's Washington or Dallas. They just know the only team that can actually catch them is the Rams, who are still actually a game behind. But the Rams did beat the Bucks. So that's why that tiebreaker is super important. Why the Bucks have to win this game for that five seed, so they get the NFC East winner. Uh, give me Tom Brady, who's in playoff form at home here. He, the Falcons. I mean, he doesn't lose to them. He's going to find a way to come back some way or another. So taking Tampa Bay, taking the sweep here. And now we get to our 4 p.m. games, guys. There's a lot of 4 p.m. games this week. I think we got Mm -hmm. four, five, six, seven, eight. We got eight 4 p.m. games this coming week. A lot of afternoon football. We kick it off with the 12 and three Green Bay Packers traveling to the eight and seven now Chicago Bears. Uh, Chicago yet again an underdog here. It's like nine out of 10 weeks, which is kind of funny. Over instead of 50 and a half. Green Bay. They have now won five in a row and seven of their last eights have a near stranglehold on the number one seed in the NFC, but they don't have it locked up quite yet with the Saints and Seahawks still technically able to obtain that number one seed in the home field advantage. So Green Bay, they will still try to win this game. Same for Chicago, though, who currently occupies the seventh seed in the NFC via actually a tiebreaker with the Cardinals, who are on the back of three straight wins now to get to eight and seven after six straight losses with Nick Folk here in the middle of the year. Or uh, Nick Foles, sorry, here in the middle of the season. Dr. West, can Green Bay lock up the number one seed or will Chicago keep things interesting? I haven't been giving Chicago enough credit this year. They 
I haven't been able to figure them out, but man, they're doing something that I didn't expect, which is putting up points. They're, I thought you know they were going to be a low-scoring defensive team, which historically the Bears are, but man, they're just dumping points on people. Um, um, with that being said, I think that the Packers are the clearly superior team. They still have something to play for, um, and they would love to knock the Bears out. So I, I think that uh, you know, the Packers are going to be a safe pick. All right, Dr. West taking the Packers. All right, Jeff, where are you going, man? Um, I'm going Bears. Mm. Mitchell Trubisky, clearly the best quarterback of his draft class. Ah. So, at this point, um, they just have done a lot to impress me. And again, the Green Bay defense, they are – Jair Alexander out of Louisville is a great corner, probably a top five corner in the league. Maybe he matches up with Allen Robinson. He generally doesn't tend to shadow wide receivers, so I think Allen Robinson gets his. This rivalry is akin to Xavier, Cincinnati, Ohio State, Michigan, Louisville, Kentucky. Regardless of the records, these teams always come to play. Um, And I just look at what Bill Lazor has done as a play caller, and he's really improved that offense. Mitch Trubisky looks like he's in command. I think they come out more motivated. I think ultimately Green Bay still ends up with the one seed and the Bears here are going to pick up the upset and hopefully I pick up a game on Wes. Jeff, yeah. man, oh, dang it. This is what I was hoping you were going to go after. I am also of that same <laughs> mindset here. I think Chicago keeps this interesting, y'all. They are averaging 37 points a game in their last three games. And they have the defense at home this week to keep this one at least close. If anything, they may not win, but I like the plus five and a half. If they can keep it, you know, 34-30 is honestly on the table in this game. Green Bay's defense has stepped up in the past couple of weeks, though. But look for Chicago's defense to step up as well with everything to play for to get that seven seed in the NFC. Give me the over all day, though, in this game. Over 50 and a half. Both these teams have scored a boatload of points in the past three weeks. Their defenses have been improved, but in a game with everything on the line, they are looking to score over 50 and a half, but taking the Bears and, you know, West on the Packers Island. So you guys have gone against me three straight picks. If you guys win all of them, we'll be tied. But you guys are going to have to go against each other now, too. You know, you can't just keep leaving me on an island. No, I get it. I'm on one island. Diff- differentiate each I'm other. On one island. I don't think Anthony's been on an island yet. I am on one island, at least. I have not. I think you were on the Pittsburgh island, weren't you, Jeff? I am. That's yeah. true. Yeah. So we've got one okay. differentiator, Wes, with, with three right. games where we've been different from you. So we're giving you the island games this week with all the favorites. So it could it's work out. Spooky. It's getting it's, spooky. It's getting spooky. It's going to be a fun week. <laughs> it's going to be a fun week. We've got cats and dogs living together. It's just a <laughs> scenario. <laughs> we've got Wes on the Packers Island. Never thought this I'd is ever. the best island to be on. I'll it, tell you that. Oh, for sure. Let's see if we can get another island game this week. We've got, I got to get back to my notes here because I scrolled up and down looking at all the games. The 7 and 8 Las Vegas Raiders traveling to the 5 and 10 Denver Broncos. Raiders, two point road favorite over under again, 50 and a half. Vegas, they have now lost three in a row to remove themselves from the AFC playoff picture after a 26-25 loss to the hashtag Fitzmagic Dolphins last Saturday. And they're actually allowing an average of 32 points a game across their last four. Denver season, don't get me started. Sorry, Steve, but their season went off the rails as soon as it began with losses to Corlin Sutton and Von Miller at the start of the year. They have now lost two in a row. Jeff, we unfortunately get another pointless NFL matchup in this game. Who takes yeah. the win here? Um, wow, that's a tough one. I just don't like Drew Locke. So, I, you know, Darren Waller, he's better than Noah Fant. Um, Josh Jacobs is still a talented back. That defense, you know, they, they bottled up Tua. They looked great against Tua. They looked like, hey, we're able to get things done here. We might have turned a corner. And then as soon as Fitzmagic came in, a legitimate, competent quarterback, they fell back into their old ways. But I don't think Drew Locke is a legitimate, competent quarterback. Yes, he has some fourth-quarter magic. Outside of that, the first three quarters, he's pretty much garbage. Uh, Melvin Gordon's a pretty good running back. But uh, other than that, the, the wide receiver core is kind of banged up. Um, and John Gruden, 
You know, he used to be Wes's pick for coach of the year. He remembers Wes picking him. He's going to want to come through for Wes here in the end. And he's going to do just enough to get over Anthony Lynn 2.0, Vic Fangio. So give me the Las Vegas Ravens. The Raiders, Dr. Wes. You've been a John Gruden man. Who are you going? Yeah. Yeah, John Gruden, if you're watching this, uh, I'd love <laughs> you to have you come to the Bengals. I'd love you to have you tutor a Burrow. Um, I, again, this is a sneaky game where nothing matters for either team. It's basically the guys kind of playing for their jobs. The Raiders have been sneaky good on the road. They're 5-2, and two, um, and I believe that they are the overall more talented team. So I'm going to take the Raiders, but again... This is a game I would avoid betting. Yes. Perfect. I had the Broncos pick for this game, and my note says, I'm hoping you both take the Raiders. Give me the Broncos at home. Vegas has been literally incapable of stopping anyone over the past four weeks. Anyone and everyone has been able to score on this piss-ass defense. I'm hoping that Drew Locke wakes up on the right side of the bed on Sunday morning and says, you know what? I feel like pissing all over this horrible defense, and I will take my Broncos to 6-10. and 10. I'm channeling my inner Steve here. Steve, let's get it, man. Go Broncos! Woo! Yeah, Drew Locke has entered the chat. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Anthony, I don't know what kind of compromising pictures Drew Locke has of you. But... All of them. <laughs> <laughs> These Mark Rears are strong, man. I'll tell you what. Oh, my gosh. I'm rooting for the Broncos here. Drew Locke's going to throw for four touchdowns on this horrible Raiders defense. They fired their defensive coordinator three weeks ago because they couldn't stop anybody, and it has not changed. Let's go. Put some points up at home. Denver Glow with a win. Help me out here, boys. Come on. Steve, send your vibes towards me here. Broncos Island for yours, truly. Let's get away from that game. We go to the 1-14 Jacksonville Jaguars traveling to the 10-5 Indianapolis Colts. Colts, two touchdown home favorites here with an over-under at 49 and a half. Congratulations are in order, though, to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who have officially earned the number one overall pick. Congratulations, you all did it. Well done. And they have all Maybe but you won't move to London right now. Yeah, <laughs> they have all but locked up the services of Trevor Lawrence, if you will. Guys, if you're a fan of stories, I got a story for you. Their only win this season, a week one win against these Indianapolis Colts, so they get a chance to bookend their 2020 NFL season with wins against their division rival Colts. Uh, speaking of the Colts, who before their 28-24 loss in Pittsburgh had won seven of their last nine, but actually do currently sit outside of the playoffs as the eight seed in that four-way tie in the AFC Wild Card. Dr. West, you took the Jags last week. You taking them again this week? Unfortunately, no. I... Uh... You know, the missing thing that I was when I picked them last week is I thought Minshew Mania was going to be all over trying to keep his job. But they were smart and uh, they when they successfully tanked by starting Mike Glennon. Uh, And I also had this narrative in my mind, like, where would the NFL want Trevor Lawrence to go? Jacksonville, Florida or New York City? So, like, I'd really I really galaxy my brain myself into (laughs) into getting on the. Jaguars bandwagon, which I can tell you is an empty bandwagon. Uh, so anyways, the Colts are going to get revenge. This game matters to them. It doesn't matter to the Jags, and they're just going to blow their doors off, I think. Jeff, you taking the Jags? For it's, um, no, absolutely not. Uh, for what it's worth, though, both of those narratives, I think, were very accurate. I, I, I think if Minshew would have started, he would have played to keep his job. Ultimately, I don't think it would have mattered. I think they're selecting a quarterback, whomever, or whichever pick they get, whether it's Justin Fields um, or Trevor Lawrence. But I think those narratives are spot on. I think ideally the NFL would like Trevor Lawrence to play for the New York Jets. It's the biggest media market in the country. He could revitalize a team in that market, but um, Adam Gase had other plans. So don't feel too bad. I, I understand the narrative, but... There's one thing you can count on. It's death, taxes, and Jacksonville losing. So (laughs) give me the money. Yeah. Thankfully for Indianapolis, they get arguably the easiest matchup of the four tied AFC teams. So they just need one of those other three teams, Baltimore, uh, Cleveland, or Miami to lose, and they are in the playoffs automatically. So good on them. They close. They, 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 Pick their schedule well, should you say. Uh, they get to close at home against Jacksonville in a revenge game, actually, for them, in a must-win game. So, good on them. But imagine going 11-5 and five and missing the playoffs, though, guys, here in the AFC. Meanwhile, you've got 
Dallas or Washington over there in the NFC slooping right into the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, it's got to feel bad. But, you know, I don't feel bad for the Colts because they were lucky enough to draft Peyton Manning. And then the year Manning got hurt, they got Andrew Luck. Karma's kind of kind, kind of but not necessarily karma, but they're finally seeing how the other half lives. As a frustrated Bengals fan, I can't feel too bad for them. Touche. Taking those frustrations out on Indianapolis, but we all took them to win this game uh, in a sweep for Indianapolis. That will take us to a game that has no lines because Vegas does not know what to make of this game just quite yet. The 6-9 the Los Angeles fighting Justin Herberts are traveling to the 14-1 Kansas City Chiefs who have locked up the number one overall, overall seed with no lines as you see there on the screen. Uh, the Chargers have been one of the weirdest teams of the year, I would say, and that's putting it lightly. I'm not sure if you guys knew this, but Anthony Lynn might have saved himself a job this year because the Chargers have actually won three games in a row now. Shocking. And this is after they got thumped 45-0 by the Pats. They've beaten fellow AFC West compatriots, the Raiders, and the Broncos over the past two weeks, and they now get a Chiefs team that has literally nothing to play for. Uh, they have the number one seed already locked up here in the AFC. So, Jeff, can Kansas City get to 15 wins, or will Justin Herbert cement his Rookie of the Year award with a Week 17 win? Oh, man, this is a tough one. So I'd imagine Andy Reid is probably going to rest the starters most of this game. There's no point in playing Mahomes. There's no point in playing Tyreek Hill, who's already banged up. Clyde Edwards-Alaire is already nursed, nagging an injury. So... There's going to be one team coming out with their full game plan, their full horses ready to go. Um, I don't know if Keenan Allen's going to be back, but they've got a li little bit of momentum. Anthony Lynn may give a rousing speech about saving his <laughs> job. Um, I'm going to go with the Chargers here. I'm going to call the upset. They're hot. Chiefs have nothing to play for. Regardless, they win or lose. They're locked into that one seed. They don't really want to show a whole lot here. They don't want to risk the injury, and the Chargers will do whatever they can to win this game. Give me the charge. Dr. West, I'm going to skip you here for a second. I'm going to let you ponder on my pick here to see where you might okay. want to go. I'll give you the option on this one here. Oh, boy. Okay. I don't see any reason for the Chiefs to risk anything in this game. There, there's literally no reason to even throw Mahomes out there for one play because you know what's going to happen. That's going to be the play. He gets hit in his legs and tears his ACL. We've seen it. Their last seven games, so this is with the starters, have all been decided by six points or less. And Herbert needs to pad those stats, man. He's already got the most passing touchdowns by a rookie in NFL history. Why not throw for four more and really cement yourself with, what, 31 or 32 touchdown passes for a rookie? I think the Chargers pull off the win here. Dr. Wes, where are you taking us? I would agree with that pick. Um, I mean, what are the Chiefs without Patrick Mahomes? I mean, that's, I don't even know who their backup is, like Matt Castle or something. And, and, uh, <laughs> it's, he's A la like 2011? He's, yeah, he's probably like <laughs> now. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, this seemed, the narrative in my mind is like what you said. Anthony Lynn is going to keep his job by winning all these meaningless games, and then they're going to set the Chargers franchise back another year. Um, from being in contention because they have this incompetent coach. So, uh, yeah, I'll take the Chargers as well. It's almost ironic that all of these wins are coming after Anthony Lynn came out to the media and was like, yeah, we're not a playoff team. We suck. <laughs> and now they've won like three games in a row and with a chance at a second or potentially third string Kansas City here. Yeah. Where Justin when, Herbert can pad his stats. Holy when you're shit. You're playing with no pressure on your shoulders. Yeah. I mean, it's great what happens when you coach when you're just got there to score points. It's really fantastic. Good for you, Anthony Lynn. You've really got this gig figured out. Well done. But, you know, Chargers sweep here, does that surprise you guys at all? No, because, I, again, I, I don't think any of the Chiefs' skill players are going to play here. If they were playing, yeah, I would definitely pick the Chiefs. But you're running the second, like you guys said, second or third team. Chiefs offense, and I imagine the same deal on defense. So the Chargers are a good enough team to overcome the second and third string players for the Chiefs, assuming Anthony Lynn doesn't get in the way. And frankly, <laughs> recently he's done just enough to allow them to win. So I think they've They'll pull it off here. Not that it'll achieve anything, but that's the point. Yeah, there Meaning lies there. the problem. Is you know, yeah. it's it might be it might be on accident. Anthony Lynn keeps his job here. <laughs> Just <laughs> falling into wins here at the end of the year is kind of crazy. Right. 
but we will take a Charger sweep. And now to a humongous... I'm honestly surprised this was not the Sunday night game. This is a humongous game. Guys, for real though, the 8-7 and seven Arizona Cardinals traveling to the 9-6 and six Los Angeles Rams. Both of these teams can still miss the playoffs and the NFC. Rams, one and a half point home favorites with an over-under. Not set this week due to the Jared Goff injury. We'll talk about that here in a second. And arguably one of the biggest games of the NFC this week. If you forget about the NFC East, Hubba Baloo, whatever you want to call it going on over there. These two teams, despite both of them having a winning record, are fighting for one of the last wildcard spots here in the NFC with the Cardinals currently on the outside looking in. They were absolutely embarrassed by Jeff Wilson last Saturday, losing 20-12 to to the third-string 49ers. Meanwhile, the Rams, no stranger to embarrassment themselves after losing to the Jets, then only scoring nine points against the Seahawks. The Rams, they can still miss the playoffs should they lose this game, and Chicago beats the Packers. Dr. West, we'll lead off with you. Who are you taking? This is not the one I want to be leading off on. Um <laughs> You know, the last time that the starting quarterback for the Rams played a game, he I'm seeing this. He was playing for the Arizona Hot Shots. Uh, and if you're not familiar with them, they are a American football franchise based in Tempe, Arizona, and one of the eight members of the Alliance of American Football. Hmm. So that's not confidence inspiring. Uh, the But both of these teams, I watched both of these games last week you know, pretty much every snap and both teams looked horrendous. The Cardinals looked horrendous against the 49ers who aren't that great. And the Rams with golf look terrible against the Seahawks who have a terrible defense. Um, I really don't know where to go with this one. I guess begrudgingly, I'm going to take the Rams and the Arizona hotshot quarterback. Oh, getting, this you know, it's a revenge a game. Bad idea. Against it's Arizona, <laughs> essentially. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, 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 I don't know. I, I was so unimpressed with the Cardinals last, the last time they played that I just, I'm hoping McVay can like somehow make this undrafted quarterback that nobody's heard of into something that's not a complete turd. Okay, Jeff, I'll skip you here. We skipped after Russ on the one before. We'll let you take the last pick here so you can see who I'm picking in, in the episode of fairness, essentially. Uh, you guys know where I'm going, though. It should be no surprise. I've taken Arizona 15 out of 16 weeks thus far. The whole game I didn't take them was against New England. The Rams are an absolute shit show. The man's name is John Wolford, whoever the hell this guy is, as Wes <laughs> said. We'll be starting for the Rams after Goff had to have thumb surgery yesterday. I'm literally picking the Cardinals because the, they've been my team all year. Um, uh, How's that worked out for you? Uh, you know, it's <laughs> not been fantastic. It's given me more acid reflux than I'd care to mention here on our show. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping they can knock the Rams out of the playoffs. I just, the Rams, they're not, I'm not saying the the, the, the Cardinals are the most deserving playoff team ever, ever. But the fact that they've now lost to the Jets and they scored nine points against Seattle last week, and now they're starting this John Wolford guy. They don't need a playoff spot. I'm taking I'm taking Arizona. Jeff, who you got? Well, Arizona could be starting some guy by the name of Chris Striebler. <laughs> Apparently, he played in the CFL. So it could, you want to know why this game's not on prime time? I know they <laughs> probably announced multiple weeks in advance, but the matchup could be Walford versus Striebler. Nothing says must watch football like that. He could, he could be the next uh, Kurt Warner. You never know. <laughs> That's true. We, you never know. Like, you know, this guy could have been bagging groceries and all of a sudden Cliff Kingsbury found them. He's like, dude, let's get this done. Um, not only that, I, I don't think we, we've touched on it. Daryl Henderson has now been sent to the IR along with Cam Akers. So two of the three of that three had a monster running back is now on the IR, so it's falling strictly to Malcolm Brown. But at the end of the day, in the matchup of two probably shitty fucking quarterbacks that nobody <laughs> wants to see play, one has a genius as a quarterback, and the other has – or I'm sorry, one has a genius as a coach, and the other has Cliff Kingsbury. Ouch. Sean McVay will do just enough. And let's be honest, Aaron Donald is still a beast. Um, Jalen Ramsey is one of the best corners in all of football, so give me the Rams here. All right, leaving me on Arizona by myself. This is going to be either a really fun week or a really horrible week for yours truly. I don't know what to make so far. Let's let's hope for horrible. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate that. That's why you're the best. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Arizona Island for me. That will take us to the second of our NFC West matchups, the 11-4 and four Seattle Seahawks, traveling to the 6-9. and nine. They should be 4-9. and nine. They're the 49ers. <laughs> See what I did there? Seattle, five-point road favorites. And <laughs> Jeff, I saw that. <laughs> Get ready to pipe in there. <laughs> no, I just like the pun. That was good. Oh, thanks, man. I've been working on that. Uh, we 47 and a half is the over-under. Uh, Seattle, like Green Bay and New Orleans, they do still have a lot to play for here with the number one overall NFC seed still up for grabs. But they cannot go lower than a three seed with the NFC West locked up for them. San Fran, though, despite playing with third stringers last week, came out and they did defeat the Cardinals 20-12. to But honestly, they're just hoping to go into the season much healthier than they were this year. Jeff, you and Dr. West have liked the Niners over the past couple of weeks. Can they play spoiler for Seattle? No, you know, they somehow won that game last week with smoke and mirrors. Um, Jeff Wilson is not Barry Sanders. He did look like it last week. Uh, that's part of the reason I was not a fan of um, the last matchup. But George Kittle's back. That's something. But, um, you know, I, look, I, I believe is now on IR or, or at least ruled out. Debo Samuel's out. Um, Nick Mullins is out. Jimmy Garoppolo's out. Um, their their defense bolsters out. It's banged up. Seahawks still have something to play for. Pete Carroll, hopefully we'll get Russ cooking again. I'm not sure what's going on there, but even if they don't, they just need Russ to like microwave something and then everything will be okay. They're going to pull off the win here. Don't need him to be the chef like you normally need him to be this week. No, <laughs> he can just make some pizza rolls or something. That'll be good. <laughs> hey, pizza rolls are still pretty solid, man. I'm not going to lie. I yes, like pizza yeah. rolls. Yeah, Dr. West, where are you going, man? Uh, I'm I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm not good at picking the 49ers. I am never on them at the right time, but uh, I'm going to stick with my NFC champion pick, and I'm going to take the Seahawks. I think they're clearly the better team. Uh, I have faith. I have faith. I think they're going to cover that five points, too. Yeah. Seattle, yep. Don't have much to add here with a ton to play for. San Francisco has nothing to play for. Seattle, though, their defensive overhaul over the past month has been insane. They're only allowing 12 points a game over their past five games. Look out for this team now in the playoffs. They might have this defense thing figured out. And when you got Russ, anything can happen. They're the much better team. We take the Seattle sweep here. Three games left, y'all. We go to the 11-4 New Orleans Saints, who are traveling to the 5-10 Carolina Panthers. Saints about a touchdown road favorite here. Over under set at 48 points. Last week, though, guys, thankfully, it was, you know, for me, it was the Alvin Kamara show. Thank you for helping yeah. me win our league championship. Cheers to that. Alvin Kamara, stand up. Take a bow, my friend. He had six rushing touchdowns. It should have been seven, but dumb Taysom Hill vultured yeah. him at, like, the one-yard line. It could have gone down to NFL history. Nonetheless, the Saints won 52-33 and a destruction of the Minnesota Vikings to lock up at least a top three seed in the AFC or the NFC. I apologize. Carolina, on the other hand, is doing their best, honestly, to play playoff spoiler here. And they look to do it again this week after a 20 to 13 win over the now Dwayne Haskins list, Washington Buckeyes. A win for New Orleans, though, puts them in the running for the number one overall seed. So, Dr. West, can they do it? I think they will. Um, I, I th- the comment that I have is that I think I can throw the ball farther than Drew Brees now, though. <laughs> I watched so much of that game. He was under throwing everybody. It was unbelievable. There, there was one that like clearly should have been an interception because the guy I can't remember who it was some random like Cunningham or Cal- Callaway for uh, the Saints. He was like five yards out in front of a guy. He was about twenty five yards down the field, and and Drew Brees threw it seven yards short of him. I mean, it was like, I don't know. He, he has like a noodle arm now. Um, that being said, they're the, clearly the, the, maybe they'll just give him a bunch of check downs to Kamara and he can hopefully throw it the five yards. And, um, they're clearly the better team and have much more to play for. So give me the saints. Yeah, there was one too, Wes. I think where Kamara was on like a wheel route and he had beat the linebacker by like three or four mm. yards. Mm. And Drew Brees underthrew him by three or four <laughs> yards. And yeah. Kamara had to like yeah. come all the way back. And it could have been intercepted, honestly. It was that underthrown. So, yeah, Drew Brees not looking good thus far. But, Jeff, where are you going? Uh, Super Kamario is going to help take the Saints in this game. I'm with you, though. Drew Brees' arm looked shot at the beginning of the year. Now he's fighting 
coming back from multiple broken ribs, a punctured lung. So I don't even think he's 100 percent. And he's got a noodle arm to begin with, and he's playing at about 80 percent. So doesn't look good for their playoff fortunes, especially mission, uh, missing Michael Thomas. But in this matchup, uh, the Panthers, man, they've just been abysmal for weeks on end. Um, you know, I think eventually that Matt Rule uh, team and whoever they hire as the new GM will will get them righted. But I don't think Teddy Bridgewater is the answer long term, and I don't think he's the answer this coming uh, Sunday or this coming week. So give me the Saints here. Yep, perfect. Nothing else to add. Um, this is, I will say, this is the final bust of the rust is what I'm calling a good game here for Drew Brees. You gotta get that rib healthy. Gotta get that lung healthy. Maybe if they get up like 28-0, you sit them here and don't, you know, risk them. Give them some time off. But yeah, Saints here with the sweep for us. New Orleans with a chance at the number one overall seed. Two games left. That will take us to the 10 and 5 Tennessee Titans traveling to the 4 and 11 Houston Texans. Tennessee about a touchdown road favorite with an over under at a week high 56 points here. In Sunday night's snow game against the Packers, the Titans were utterly embarrassed. 40. To 14 and December Henry, as he will now be called here, was limited to only 98 rush yards on 23 carries. Thankfully, he may get the antidote that he needs as Houston allows the second most rush rush a little bit rush yards in a must-win game for Tennessee to take the AFC South and get that all-important home game for them. Houston, though, has now lost four in a row, bringing JJ Watt to the forefront of our football Sunday with a passionate speech about showing up and caring and winning. Mm. Jeff, will J.J.'s speech be enough for Houston to play spoiler for Tennessee? No. Um, I mean, this team just gave up, uh, again, 372 passing yards to Brandon Allen last week. Not to mention the running backs, whether it was Samaj P. Ryan or um, Travion Williams or Gio Bernard were running all over them. It, Derrick Henry gets to face them. This team has mailed it in. Romeo Cornell tried his best to rally the troops. J.J. Watts trying the same. But they just don't have the talent to do it, not to compete with um, the, the Titans who are, are, are primed and have something to play for. Whether or not J.J.'s speech was motivating, yeah, it'll motivate some people, but the motivation of actually having a possibility of doing something in the postseason is way more motivating than any speech. So give me the Titans. Wes, you agree with Jeff? I am. I think the problem for Derrick Henry last week was that they got down early against the the Packers. They came out, you know, out of the gates hot, and they just couldn't run it that much if they wanted to try to win a, a horse race against the Packers. And so you know, when you take the ball out of Derrick Henry's hands, that offense is just not the same. Um now playing against the Texans, which I don't think are going to, they could put up points uh, against this suboptimal uh, Tennessee Titans defense, but I don't think they're going to pull out ahead like they uh, the Packers did. So I think that the Texans will get a heavy dose of Derrick Henry and uh, the Titans will win uh, comfortably. Yep. Again, nothing else to really add here. If Derrick Henry doesn't get 30 plus carries for 200 plus yards, then someone needs to have a talk with Mike Vrabel. Um, Tennessee should sit on Henry here. Let him do his thing. Houston can't stop anybody against the run. If Henry doesn't get going, the game might be closer than we think. Uh, But Tennessee wins to take the AFC South and get that all-important home game there for the playoffs. We have a sweep here going into our final game of the week, Sunday night. I got one thing to add about that previous matchup. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's, it's the only matchup this season between two teams that have actually lost to the Bengals. So. Ooh, <laughs> what a <an laughs> Bengals ball. <laughs> that, that's, uh, at least, though, when Tennessee lost to the Bengals, Burrow was still the quarterback. So That's true. Yeah, it wasn't no Brandon Allen crapola bowl that we had last week. So <laughs> Yes. That will take us to our regular season finale. We've got the 6-9 and nine Washington Buckeyes, as we like to call them here on the channel, traveling to the 4-10-1 Philadelphia Eagles. Washington, a one-point road favorite here in this NFC East battle, over under at 42-and-a-half. Our last game is where, with a win, no matter any other result, Washington will take the division. But Jalen Hurts may have something he wants to say about that. 
Washington, they don't quite have momentum on their side as they have now lost two in a row. And they released the immature and honestly, Dr. West, not very good at all, Dwayne Haskins. I do apologize. I'm guessing this may end his NFL career for at least, you know, the next little bit. I've seen there was some interest, but he was not claimed on waivers today. Washington, they were able to beat Philadelphia week one. And Philly, though, they have now lost six of their past seven to eliminate them from the playoffs. Dr. West, can your Buckeyes sneak into the playoffs here with a win against Philly? Yeah, I'm glad I got ahead of the ball and uh, swore off Haskins before he got cut. Uh, I told you guys last week he was dead to me. I actually saw a funny meme. It was a picture of Haskins and um, uh, Harden next to each other, James Harden. And it said, yeah, it just says titties over titles. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so I don't feel heartbroken that he got cut. I saw that he has a uh, guaranteed $4 million coming his way. Yeah. So I'm hoping he can, um, you know, budget that. I think I could live comfortably off $4 million for the rest of my life. Like do some investments, you know, I think you could do it. I don't know if he has the maturity to do it. So, um, Oops, I don't strip know. Club. Be, it's all yeah, gone. The, if you're going to the strip club, you know, frequently, you're not, that's not going to last a lot, long time. And if you're buying all those Walmart jerseys to put on the strippers, <laughs> like Jeff said, so those, those add up. Um, Anyways, uh, I'm going to get back to – I've been completely wrong about the Eagles. Uh, three weeks ago, I said they were going to win for the, every game for the rest of the season and make a run at the, the division, and they didn't. So I'm, I'm jumping ship. I'm, I'm going back to the team that I've been on all year, and that's the Washington Washingtons. Uh, they got rid of the stank of Haskins, and I, I think they're just the better team. They have a tremendous uh, defensive line that we talk about all the time, and – um, I think, you know, getting rid of that stank, they're going to be, they're going to be ready to go. Okay. Jeff, got to be different from Dr. West here. You taking the Eagles? You know, they're starting a quarterback. Taylor Heineke played at old dominion. <laughs> so, you know, he's semi-local. That's the Virginia area. And, uh, you know, Washington is of course in Maryland right across the way there, but that defense is still, you know, it's going to give teams in the NFC East and the NFC nightmares for years to come. It's a good, solid front seven. Um, and, and they have McKissick, a guy that can be that safety valve for Heineke, um, that can do just enough to keep them into the game and let their defense give the rookie Hurts fits. We saw what happened last week when Hurts went into a game down in the fourth quarter and had to make things happen. Had some turnovers. Yeah, the fumble was questionable. I think he was clearly down. I won't put that one on him, but he did force some throws in the fourth quarter without trying to make a comeback. And I think Washington's defense is just going to be the edge that I'll give them here. Um, Philadelphia's defense is atrocious, so I'm going to take the football team as well. Oh, boy. Hmm. You guys have really left me in a pickle here. Ah. Uh... Oh, I'll go wow, with the other games uh, I've already uh, picked. He's tormented. Yeah. yeah I have Washington written down. I actually have them as one of my finalists for Survivor this week. Wow. Um, I didn't expect you both to take – I was thinking that Jeff was going to take Philly here. I was trying to, like, plan out my picks to, like – you know, as, as Wes said, it's a galaxy brain my way around Jeff, but through Wes. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I was like, I think Jeff's going to take Philly here because Wes is probably going to take the Buckeyes. Er, wrong. Um, I know I've already gotten different a couple other times um, already. I don't feel comfortable enough taking Philly, though, with that Washington front seven, as you so politely put it. Uh, Philly has most recently given up 37 points to the Cowboys and 33 to the Cardinals. So with a division on the line and a defense ready to come stuff a rookie and put him in his place, I think I'm going to have to go with Washington here. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. again, I just think that Hurts, he's looked good, but this is going to be a real test for him. They're starting to get more and more film on him. They're going to put this on his shoulder. Maybe he's good. Maybe he's not. We haven't seen enough of him. Give me that Washington front seven and Ron Rivera versus Doug Peterson, who I know is your boy. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. hear me trash him. I was just literally going to say, if Doug Pierce is going to toss one in the trash, it's this one because he's an idiot. Yep. Give me Ron yep. Rivera. 
uh, over over stupid Doug Pierce at any day of the week. Washington sweep to close out our week here and to get to Survivor. Jeff, I feel like it's only polite to kick things off with you after back to back just train wrecks of picks. I don't want to like be crude, but I mean, I don't know what else you call it here with back to back misses. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I tried to be different. I tried to be a little bit more challenging since you guys got a head start. And I'll kind of go middle of the road with this one. I think it's, again, a team that ultimately most people are going to pick to win. But I could see this team they're playing potentially beating them. It's not a slam dunk like the Ravens versus the Bengals, who already used the Ravens anyway, but something along that line. Um, give me the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Buffalo the Dolphins. or Miami. Okay, Dr. Wes. Respectable. Uh, I at least have secured a win in this avenue against you, Anthony. You can't yeah. you can't beat me in this, so that's good. Um, I'm going to take a team that you can't take uh, to ruin for me, and that's the Colts. <laughs> uh, going to lay the smack down on the Jaguars. I will say, I picked the Colts week one against the Jags. Wouldn't that just be hilarious? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you took them last week, the Jags, I mean... So I was down to to a couple teams. I had Washington. Um, I honestly was looking. I hadn't used the Chargers yet. And I think the Chargers are fine against a second or third string Kansas City with nothing to play for. Um, so you, you know what? Yeah, why not? Let's just go with, let's just go with the Chargers. Um, I also had the Broncos on here, but I don't feel quite as comfortable with them as well as the Vikings. But I also wasn't comfortable with them either, even though it's a meaningless game against Detroit. Uh Chargers, why not? Who the hell cares? It's week 17, I'm already dead anyway, so... What's funny is that um, if you look at your survivor, the teams that you lost with are all basically playoff teams. Uh, They're high seed teams, but you got wins with teams like uh, Dallas, the Bears, (laughs) and that, like, how does that happen? Cleveland, Dallas... that Dallas pick was Dak still the quarterback at that point because they look a whole lot different uh, uh, as a team than they do now. I think but, that was actually the week he got hurt. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, it seems about right because he went down around like week five. I feel like, but Let me see yeah, here. but he's got a good point. Like you, your losses: Saints, Seahawks, Rams, and Cardinals. I mean, all of those teams are in the playoff, huh? and then you've just got some <laughs> randos in there that have yeah, Colts, well, to randos. But, Colts uh, losing to the Jags. Cardinals. Who, I got to see who the Cardinals lost to week three. Let's see here. Cardinals lost to the Lions week three. Sick story of my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then That's what I was saying three. earlier. You're like, I'm back in the Cardinals again this week. I'm like, how has that worked out for you? You know, honestly, it's been a little bit more painful than I wanted it to be. To be, yeah. to be honest. That's I, okay. I expected maybe, better things from a year or two, Kyler Murray, and he's been okay, I suppose. But yeah. I mean, maybe Cliff Kingsbury will invite you over to his awesome house. Like, that would be yeah. pretty cool. I'll, I'll sit on that couch where that picture was taken at the draft. Why not? Let's yeah, do it. Yeah, right? Cliff, hook me up, man. I've picked you 15 out of 16 times, dude. <laughs> right. help, help me out a little bit, man. He owes you, man. He yeah. owes you. No kidding. That will about do it, though, guys. Any final thoughts on Week 17, the finale? I think you and I both went out on some limbs here in an attempt to catch um, the second greatest football mind of our generation. Um, But I don't know how it's going to work out, but we had to pull some moves. So it should keep things interesting. But um, at the very least, it's been fun. Looking forward to, to the playoffs, and I'm just glad we honestly are about to get 17 weeks of football. And I don't think a lot of people when this thing all start, all started that we'd be able to get this far without any delay. So I'm impressed. And it kind of made a shitty year, at least a little bit more tolerable. Yeah. Yeah. In this COVID year, we didn't expect a full season to take place. So if you stuck with us throughout the whole season, Thank you for hanging in there with us throughout the whole entire regular season. Shout out to Civilian Jimmy who commented on nearly every single one of our videos. You're the man. Appreciate the support and everyone else who has commented on our videos as well. Speaking of commenting on those videos, Dr. Wes, last, there it is, down Dr. below, is the there's He's Tua the for you. He's joined us yet again. <laughs> Tua, good luck this week, my friend. I hope you do well against the Bills. You're going to need it. Hopefully, it'll get benched for Ryan Fitzmagic again this week. That will do it for our Week 17 video, guys. Hope you all do well in your fantasy football championships as well. And we'll see you guys in the playoffs.
Charlie. Good night. Good luck. Good luck.